What's up everybody, Nathaniel Morton here with NathanielMorton.com teaching you how to get bigger, stronger, faster, and more explosive. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to lose body fat. And to be completely honest, I have been dreading making this video. I've been procrastinating this video because there is just, there's so much that goes into losing body fat. There's so many moving parts. It's not hard to lose body fat, but it is hard to teach someone why they are losing body fat. But there's been so many comments saying, Nate, can you make this video? Can you make this video? Teach us how to lose body fat percentages. So here we go. There are four steps that I want you to understand when it comes to losing body fat. And we're not talking about losing weight, we are talking about losing body fat. Because you can lose weight if you wanna lose weight, but you can be building muscle in losing body fat and stay the same weight. Okay, so we're not focused on losing weight, we are focused on losing and burning body fat. Okay, step number one, when we're talking about how to lose body fat is that you have to be in a caloric deficit. And here's what that means. When it comes to losing body fat or losing weight, all, the, all, the, all that matters is calories in versus calories out. When it comes to burning body fat, you have to burn more calories than you consume, than you eat and drink and consume into your body. You have to burn more calories than that. So there's a certain thing called your maintenance level of calories. Your maintenance level of calories is the calories that you need to eat each day to maintain your weight. That's why it's called maintenance. That's how many calories you need to maintain your weight. For example, for myself, it's about 3,000 calories. At 3,000 calories a day, I maintain my weight. If I'm in a caloric surplus, meaning that I'm eating a surplus, I'm eating more calories than my maintenance level, I will gain weight if I am eating in a caloric deficit, that means I'm eating less calories than my maintenance. That means that I will lose weight. So for example, for myself, if I want to lose body fat, I need to be in a caloric deficit. My maintenance calories is 3,000 calories. A deficit means that I have to eat less calories than 3,000. So I would probably be eating anywhere from 2,500 calories to 3,000 calories per day and I would lose body fat, okay? So that's the first thing. You must be in a caloric deficit in order to lose body fat. Next thing is the calorie calculator. I will link a calorie calculator down below in the description. It's a free calculator, just a free assessment. You click the link, it'll take you to a website. You put in your height, your weight, how active you are, your age, and it will tell you how many calories you need to be eating per day to maintain your weight, to gain weight, or to lose weight and to lose body fat. So it's gonna give you a number that will be your caloric deficit. That's how many calories you need to eat each day to lose weight and to lose body fat. So I also use MyFitnessPal. MyFitnessPal is a free app. If you have an iPhone or a smartphone or an Android, you can download MyFitnessPal. There's other ones, but this is what I personally use. And you can track all of your food. There's a barcode scanner where if you eat, you know, you got you get some chicken from the grocery store. You scan the chicken and it, it puts it into my fitness pal. Then you eat, you know, some sweet potatoes. You can, if it doesn't have a scanner for a barcode, you can type it in sweet potatoes, four ounces of sweet potatoes, this many carbs. Okay, and you can do that each day to make sure that you are eating your number of uh, your caloric deficit number of calories each day. So these are two tools that you can use to help you on that journey. Real quick, get your caloric deficit, get that number of what you should be eating per day, and then each day track what you eat with MyFitnessPal. This is a great way to also understand what is in each food and learn about what you are actually putting into your body. Step number two when it comes to losing body fat. Now I do want you to know before I say this that this is just the way that I have burned body fat and lost weight in the past, okay? I've done bodybuilding shows, I've lost weight in the past, I've shredded down my body to where I was chiseled looking like a statue, and this is what I've done. You can do the ketogenic diet, you can do intermittent fasting, you could do all of these other diets, all of those work, they are useful. However, this is the way that I have personally lost weight and lost body fat to get chiseled up looking like a statue in the past, so this is what I'm going to give you. Here we go. 
Step number two in how to lose body fat, you want to be eating 40% of your calories each day, you want to be protein. 40% of your calories each day, you want to be carbs, and 20% of your daily calories, you want to be fats. Those are the three macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% fats. So how do you figure this out? For example, myself. Let's use myself for an example. We already understand that 3,000 calories, if I eat that each day, I'm going to maintain my weight. If I want to lose weight and lose body fat, then I need to be in a caloric deficit. We already discussed that that was 2,500 calories that I am eating each day to lose body fat. So if I'm doing 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% fats, and this does matter, guys, um, you can't just eat all fats and all carbs at this many calories and expect to look good and lose a bunch of weight and look like a statue, okay? You can't do that. So 40, 40, 20, I'd be eating 250 grams of protein, 250 grams of carbs, and 55 grams of fats. Now let me show you how I figured that out. So let's take 2,500 calories. I'm gonna do it on my calculator right here. 2,500, okay? I wanna be eating 40% protein. So I multiply that by 0.4. That equals 1,000. I take 1,000 and I divide that by four because there are four calories per gram of protein. Four calories for each gram of protein, four calories for each gram of carbs, and nine calories for each gram of fats. And there are seven calories per gram of alcohol, if you happen to care. But here we go. So I divide that by four and I get 250 grams of protein that I need to be eating each day um, to lose weight, okay? That's what I want for my protein. Same thing, we'll do it once again real quick. It's still, it's 40%, 40%, so it's gonna be the same number for protein and carbs. But real quick, we'll do it once again. 2,500 calories, multiply that by 0.4, because I want 40% to be carbs, we get 1,000. There are four, gram, or four calories per gram of carbs, so we get 250 grams of carbs and 250 grams of protein that I want to be eating each day. Now we do fats, this is where it gets a little different, okay? I want to be eating 20% fats to burn body fat. So 2,500 calories, that's my daily caloric intake, that's my caloric deficit, multiply that by 0.2 for 20% fats, we get 500, okay? 500 calories need to come from fats, divided by nine, because there are nine, cal nine calories per gram of fat, and we get 55 grams of fats that I want to be eating each day. So 250, 250, 55 grams of fats. Do the math for you, but you want to be eating. That's step number two, 40% protein, 40% carbohydrates, 20% fats to burn body fat and look chiseled like a statue. Step number three, when it comes to how to lose body fat, step number three is weight training. Now this step is not essential. You don't have to do weight training. You don't have to lift weights to lose weight and lose body fat. However, I do recommend it, number one, by doing weight training, you are going to burn more calories than if you did not do weight training. That will help you lose weight faster. And number two, you don't wanna lose all this weight and lose all this body fat and then have nothing underneath. Okay, you want some muscle underneath to look good with. Look like that Greek god, look like that statue, look aesthetic that got all the ladies running to you calling your name, okay? So weight training, I'll give you three, that's a tongue twister, three quick splits. I'll give you three quick splits that you can do um, for weight training. So we have a full body split. This is where you work out everything in your body in one day. So you would go on Monday, you'd work your chest, your back, a little bit of shoulders, a little bit of arms, and then a little bit of legs. Everything in one day. Okay, you would do this Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's one split, that's not what I do. This is what I personally do. You can do any of these, they'll all help. Upper lower split, this is my personal one. I go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. On Monday, I do upper body, okay? I do my chest, my back, my arms, my shoulders. Tuesday, I do my legs, my hamstrings, my quads, my glutes, my calves. Thursday, I'm back to upper body. Friday, I'm back to lower body. 
Okay, that's another split you could do. Then you got push, pull, legs. Notice here, you only go to the gym three times per week. Here you go four times per week. With this split, you go six times per week. Push, pull, legs. So it would be Monday would be push, everything push. That's your chest, that's your triceps, that's your shoulders. Tuesday would be pull, that's your back, that's your biceps, that's your traps. Then you got Wednesday would be legs, that's your quads, calves, hamstrings, uh, gluteus maximus, that booty meat. Then you got, you repeat Tuesday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday is push, pull, legs again. So you go push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, and then Sunday would be a rest. On this one, Tuesday's a rest, Thursday is a rest, Saturday, Sunday's a rest. On this middle one, Wednesday is a rest, Saturday, Sunday is a rest. So you can pick what you want to do, but for those two reasons that I gave you, I do think that you should do weight training because it will help you burn more calories and lose weight faster. And number two, you don't want to just look like a skinny dude once you lose all this weight. Okay? You want some muscle underneath to look good with. So that is step number three when it comes to losing body fat. Step number four when it comes to losing body fat is cardio. This is just the icing on the cake. Cardio is not absolutely necessary, but it does help you burn more calories, therefore losing more weight and more body fat. Now, there are three types of cardio that I want to discuss with you. And I do recommend that you do cardio. You don't have to, but you should just to have a healthy heart. Okay, cardio keeps you young. Okay, you need your cardio. Okay, steady state cardio. This is where you would walk on a treadmill for 20 minutes at an incline, okay? Sometimes I do this when I'm feeling lazy, but I don't feel that this is the best form of cardio, especially for athletes. And the main, the majority of the people who watch this channel are athletes. So steady state cardio, it is going to help you burn a lot of fat. Okay, where you get on a, for if I were to do steady state cardio, I would get on a treadmill, I would do 20 to 30 minutes, I would put the incline all the way up as high as it can go, and I would do three miles an hour. So walk three miles an hour, incline all the way up for 20 to 30 minutes. That would be my steady state cardio. However, I hardly ever do steady state because it's not, it's not most optimal for athletes and I wanna be bigger, faster, stronger, more explosive. Hit and sports, these are the most effective for athletes. So high intensity interval training. High intensity interval training. This is where you take your heart rate up and down, up and down, up and down, and it boosts your metabolism and helps you burn fat well after you are done working out. So for the next 24, 48 hours, you will be burning fat after a nice HIIT workout. So high intensity interval training. You're just doing intervals. An example of HIIT training would be sprints. Okay, all out maximum effort sprints. Okay, they could be a hundred yard sprints. If you have a track, they could be a 40 yard dash, but you wanna use all of your effort in that one sprint. So let's, let's give you an example. You sprint a hundred yards, okay? You give all out effort, maximum effort, as hard, as hard as you can go for that 10 to 15 to 20 second time period. Okay, so all out sprint. Then you would walk the rest of the way around the track, let your heart rate recover, let your heart rate lower, and spend about two minutes, you know, not doing anything, just resting, walking, recovering. Then you do another sprint. Then you rest, recover, and then get your heart rate lower. Then you do another sprint. You would do this about four to six times. So high intensity, maximum effort, and then let your heart rate drop back down. You could do this on the treadmill. Sometimes you do, you're do. you gonna look funny doing it on the treadmill, but you put the treadmill up to 12 miles an hour and you do a sprint for 30 seconds. And then you put it down to three miles an hour. You walk for three minutes. And then you sprint for 30 seconds and then you walk for three minutes. This is high intensity interval training. You can also do it with battle ropes. You can do a lot of different things for high intensity interval training. You could do sprints up a hill and then use the time walking back down the hill as your recovery time. And then sprint up the hill and then walk back down the hill and let your heart rate recover. Okay, that's high intensity interval training. Then you got your sports, okay? If you play a sport, if you're on a basketball team, if you're on a football team, if you're on a volleyball team, and you do 
some type of cardio every single day for practice, then you don't even really need cardio. That is your cardio. So I would just play your sport and not do any other cardio because let's face it, basketball, that is high intensity interval training. You're moving side to side, you're sprinting and then you're walking and then there's a timeout and your heart rate's going down. Then you're sprinting again. You, then you got a fast break and then your heart rate's recovering. So play your sport. But this is the fourth step when it comes to losing body fat. You got to do some sort of cardio. Number one, to keep your heart healthy. Number two, for that icing on the cake, the more cardio you do, the more calories you will burn, the more fat you will burn. But don't sit there doing endless amounts of cardio. Just get in, hit it hard, and get out. But these have been the four steps that I think you need to understand as to how and why you can lose body fat or lose weight if you want to. This has been Nathaniel Morton. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share this if you think someone else can get value from the content. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell if you have not already. And ladies and gentlemen, take action because action is everything. Knowledge is not power. It is only potential power until you take action on what you know. Little actions equal little results. Big all out actions giving everything you got equals big results. I will see you guys next time. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are interested in a step-by-step -step vertical jump training program that can walk you through every set, every rep, and every exercise that you need to increase your vertical jump, jump higher, and dunk a basketball, I will link my very own vertical jump training program down below in the description of this video, or you can visit my website at www.nathanielmorton.com. If you are interested in vertical jump online coaching, you can once again click the link down below in the description or email me at nathanielmortoncoaching at gmail.com. Like this video if you like it, subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you guys next time.